Oh, I hope I don't hit a worm this time. Oh, hey everybody. Mr. Scott here. I'm working on some more inventions. You know, the other day I was in my workshop and a friend called me. He said, I have this problem that I want you to fix. He said, whenever I chew chewing gum, after a few minutes, the flavor's gone. And then you're like chewing this wad of stuff in your mouth with no flavor. He said, is there any way that you can make chewing gum flavor last a little bit longer? And I thought about it and I said, yep, I'll get right on it. So I began working on it. But then after a few days, I started thinking, you know, if we're going to make chewing gum flavor last longer, it really ought to be better flavors. I mean, some chewing gum flavors are just weird. I mean, what's, what's a winter green? The only thing I can think of that's green in winter is Christmas trees. And nobody wants to chew on pine needles. That's just weird. So I thought I can come up with a whole lot better. So I've been working on some ideas here. Um, I came up with this one, which is steak and baked tomato, and then spaghetti and meatloaf, um, taco and guacamole, and, oh, Brady Bunch favorite, this one, pork chops and apple sauce. Yep, that's good. So my friend's really going to be uh, impressed with all the new flavors that I came up with. But, you know, when it really when it comes down to it, chewing gum flavors, that's just a small problem. What if we have problems that are really, really big? Or maybe we've had them a really, really long time. Or maybe they're just problems that nobody can figure out what to do. You know, who can help us with our problems, and as somebody who is always there with us, no matter what happens. If you guess Jesus, you get a gold sticker. Let's see what the Bible says about it. The Bible gives us a true account of how Jesus healed a man who could not walk. So let's turn to John chapter 5, and let's read about it. So Jesus went to Jerusalem, the capital city of Israel. He went to a place where many sick people were. It was a place called the Pool of Bethesda. Now, this wasn't a swimming pool. It was where people who were blind or lame or paralyzed went because they thought the water could heal them. Jesus noticed a man who could not walk. This is called being lame. He had been lying there for a long time, 38 years. Jesus asked him, Do you want to get well? Now, what would you say if you couldn't walk and somebody asked you if you wanted to walk? I'd say, of course. The man answered, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. Someone else always gets in before me. The man believed that if he could get into the water, he would be healed. Jesus told him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Right away, the man was miraculously healed. He picked up the mat he was sitting on, and he started to walk. Wow! For 38 years, all this man could do was sit or lay there. Now he could walk and run and skip and jump and dance. And that was a miracle that only Jesus could do. And Jesus did it to show everybody that he was God. Some Jewish people told the man who was healed, It is the Sabbath day. It is against the law to pick up your mat and carry it on the Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath day was what the Jewish people called Saturday. And in Bible days, that was a day that God had set aside that people should rest and they should worship Him. But the religious leaders of that day put a lot of extra rules on. You can't go places, you can't work, you can't do things, you can't even carry things. The man replied, The man who healed me told me to pick up my mat and walk. Who was that man? the Jews asked. But the man who was healed did not know who had healed him. By this time, Jesus had slipped away into the crowd. Later, Jesus found the healed man in the temple. Jesus said to him, See, you are healed. Do not sin anymore, so that something worse doesn't happen to you. Well, what could be worse than not being able to walk? Well, if the man chose to keep on sinning and not believe in Jesus as his Savior, someday when he died, he would have to go to a place called hell. And it's a place of fire and darkness, and there's nothing good there because God's not there. 
But God doesn't want us to go to hell. He wants us to trust in Jesus as Savior so we can go live with him in heaven someday. Then the man went to the Jews and told them that Jesus had healed him. So the Jews began persecuting Jesus because he was helping people on the Sabbath. Now persecuting means to cause problems for someone because of what they do or be, treat them badly for their beliefs. Jesus told them, My father is working and I am working too. Now the Jews really wanted to kill Jesus because he wasn't just breaking the rules about the Sabbath. He was saying that God is his father, making himself equal to God. So Jesus healed this man who couldn't walk, but he didn't even ask him if he believed in Jesus. He just found him and healed him. But Jesus was more interested in helping him with his sin problem. And that's what our verse says this week. Luke 19 verse 10 says, The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now, the Son of Man is another name for Jesus. And when it says that he came to seek and save which was lost, it doesn't mean that Jesus is looking for somebody who's lost in a store or lost in the woods. It means that he came to save us from our sin. Our sin separates us from God, and Jesus wants to save us from our sin so we can go back to God. Remember what sin is? Sin is anything we think, say, or do that disobeys God, and it separates us from him. But remember, Jesus came, and he died on the cross, and he was buried, and he rose again to take the punishment for our sins. And the Bible says if anybody puts their faith, if they trust that Jesus did that for them, and they turn away from their sins, and they turn to Jesus instead, that he'll forgive them and take away their sins and bring us back to God. So let's look at the verse one more time. Luke 19.10 the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So let's do the verse together, okay? The Son of Man came, let's point, like we're pointing to Jesus. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now, why did I point to myself? Because all of us have sinned. Everybody has sinned. And so before we knew Jesus, we were lost. I was lost. But when I met Jesus, when I received Jesus as my Savior, then I wasn't lost anymore. I was his. So let's say the verse together. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Let's try it again. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. One more time. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the the lost, right? So Jesus helps us with our problems, but he's more interested in helping us with our spiritual problems. And then when we, when we know Jesus, when we become a follower of him, then we can love him and we can bring him glory. Why did God create people? God created people to love him and to give him glory. So we can go to Jesus with any problem and he always helps us and he's always right there with us. If we have a sickness or if we need money or we have problems at school or with a friend, Jesus is right there and he wants to help us. He cares about these things, but he's even more interested in spiritual things. He wants us to trust him as Savior from sin. And once we do trust him, he wants us to love him and to bring him glory. He wants us to live a life that's pleasing to him and that we become more like Jesus. And he wants us to help other people. And he wants us to trust him for everything. He wants us to read the Bible and pray. So all these things are things that Jesus is most interested in. So we have a lot of problems right now. Um, we can't go to work. We can't go to school. Uh, we need money. Uh, the government's kind of being stinky about things. But maybe a lot of the problems that we have right now is just the time that Jesus is telling us to come close to him and to trust him for everything. So we need to trust Jesus with everything and do it now. Do it while you're a kid so you learn how to do it now. And that way you do it when you become a grown-up too. So cool. That was a good lesson. I think we should celebrate by chewing some of my new gum. What do you think? Oh. Oh. 
Oh, that's oh, that's just bad. Mm. Okay. Note to self: banana and onion is not a good flavor. Oh, no. Oh. oh, that's just bad. Um. Okay. Bye, everybody.